if you're in luck, you've received a BIM model that is exactly how you expect it to be. And all that's left to do is to import it into your system, and then all your data and quantities is there readily available for you, exactly as you expect. But we all know this usually isn't the case. Your model may have missing information, your elements might not be divided exactly how you would like them to be for your quantities, or sometimes you just need quantities that aren't directly modeled at all, like formwork or maybe wall paint. In this video, we're going to talk about Sparkle's perhaps most loved feature, namely Shapes. Shapes allows you to add your own geometry on top of your existing models to bridge the gap between what has been designed and what you need to get your data and quantities. We're going to talk about the different type of shapes, we're going to talk about linking shapes, and then we're going to talk about organizing shapes. So, let's go ahead. Shapes are created within tables. So let's start creating a new table. Let's name it Shapes. And on the right side here, you see a panel that says shapes. So in this new table, you see that no shapes has been created here. So we can start creating our new shapes by clicking this plus button or shift S. This takes you into shape edit mode and you can see the toolbar here for the different tools available for creating shapes. The first one here is a point shape. This is simply a point and this could be interesting for counting electrical wall outlets, for instance. Then we have the polyline. This is a shape that can go in all directions and measures a total length. This could be useful for gutters, for example. And then we have the polygon shapes. Polygon shapes are created on top of existing elements. I can draw my shape directly on top of this wall here. Note that you can add more points by double clicking on an edge or remove a point by double clicking on a point. There's also this magic polygon shape, which basically lets you create these polygon shapes with a single click. Shapes is also how you extract quantities from 2D documents. So let's switch to sheet mode. To switch from models to sheet mode, simply click sheets here and you will go into sheet mode. If I do shift S to create a new shape here, you can see I have similar toolbar, but here I also have the rectangle, which of course is useful for creating rectangular rooms. To finish creating a shape, click this blue checkmark button here or simply click enter. You're usually creating many different shapes at once, so instead of pressing enter, you can also press space, which saves your shape, but also start creating a new one right away. When your shapes have been created, they can be linked to items as any other elements. And you see that your shapes get colored according to your items. You can even use the breakdown feature for shapes and add additional information. You can also use Dynamic Link and even Copilot to add your shapes even quicker. One of the many great use cases for shapes is to calculate the wall paint. So let's have a look at that. Let's create a new table, call it wall finishes. So look at this room, for example. I could have used this wall directly by using the net area calculations to get the wall paint. But I'm getting in trouble for this wall, since it goes across two rooms. And maybe even more for this wall, since it goes across multiple levels as well. So this is a perfect use case for shapes. So I'm going to start by very quickly creating the shape that I'm after. And press space to create a new one. I'll also add a shape here. Note that if you hold down shift while moving, it will move your edge perpendicular. So now I got these four shapes that can be used to calculate the wall paint area for this room alone. Shapes are also great for dividing your elements into separate parts. So if you have a look at this table, I've used the BIM elements to create an item for internal walls. And all of them are divided neatly into levels. But when I try to do the same with the BIM elements, you see that many of the walls were across different stories. And that means that when I break it down, I don't get the area per level as I want it. So here I've used shapes to divide the walls into different levels. And that means that I can break it down. To organize your shapes, you can use what's called shape folders. So that's what I've done here. I've created different folders that are names of the floors in my project. And then I use the breakdown feature to break down by the shape folder. You can also break it down by the shape names. So Shapes is an incredibly powerful tool that seamlessly connects 2D and 3D and also allows you to extract any quantity that you're interested in. 